Hello and welcome back to the Mystery Clan. We are still in the New Leaf season. I just time skipped one moon, so we are at 26 moons now. Looks like Mystery Clan doesn't have enough prey for next moon. Pale Jump wandered out into the territory and was later found dead. Oh no, a peaceful expression on their face. Oh no, Pale Jump. Aww. Was surprised to find themselves walking the stars of Silver Pelt. How sad. We lost. We lost Pale Jump and I gave stars probably grieving. The infection in Lightning Shower's wound has abated. Lightning Shower has healed from the strain of delivering their litter. That's good. They had a really hard time. Whimsy Toe spends the evening regaling the clan with stories of the Hair King, the Starbugs, and the Great Tail Chaser. Snake Charm's stomach ache has left. Dash Freckle was seen touching noses with a kitty pet. Scandalous. Cyclone Paw has gotten a running nose. Husky Paw's running nose has finally stopped running. Spruce Kit's headache is gone. Silver Kit starts bringing a, a pretty bunch of puddles everywhere they go, and Timber Kit loudly complains that they want one too. The past moon, Pell Jump has taken their place in Star Clan. Mystery Clan mourns their loss, and their clanmates will miss the spot they took up in their lives. Moments of their life are shared in stories around the circle of mourners as those that were closest to them take them to their final resting place. As the herb stores are inspected by the medicine cats, it's noticed that some of the golden rod went bad. They'll have to be replaced with new ones. Okay. So let's go to our cat list and I'm going to bring up my notes because we do have some name changes once again. We have Dash Freckle. Right here, who is going to be Dash Chameleon? I think I spelled that right. Okay, and then we have Nucleus Nut, which is our new cat, who is going to be Tenderfoot. Foot. Okay, and then they are 39 moons, which means they would have been um, spayed already because they were formerly a kitty pet. So we need to toggle, prevent kits. Okay, and her story is that she is currently looking for her mate. Um, we were going to do Ginger Snap, but I guess depending on if it's a male or female, Ginger Snap might not fit so well, I don't know. Um, which is around the same age, so we're looking for a cat, male or female, who is around 39 moons on our patrols. And we'll probably have Tenderfoot do like border patrols looking for them. So that's kind of Tenderfoot's little little thing they have going. Um, let's see, we have we have kittens who have aged. I was going to do this off camera, so maybe give me one minute and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, so we're back. I just had to check my spreadsheet really quick um, to see if we needed to roll for any like new apprentices to have them patrol and see if they've decided what they want to be. And it looks like um, all of them so far have chosen what they want to be and the ones 
that still need to are still too young. So I think we're good there. And we're going to go ahead and move on to patrols. I believe I said that I would do solo patrols this time. So I think that's what we're going to do. We will start with Dash Chameleon, the warrior. And since we need so much prey, we're going to start with um, hunting. As Dash Chameleon tears through the forest, stretching their legs on a run, they spot movement out of the corner of their eye. Dash Chameleon skids to a halt and tries to sprint after it, but the bird they saw escapes their paws. They chatter angrily at it, and it tries to poop on them. Such is life. A very small amount of prey is brought to camp. We have Olive Talon, who is also going to go hunting. Olive Talon hears distant howling and wonders whether to investigate the noise. Ow woo! Right, and we are going to flip a coin to see if they go or not. Heads, they go. Tails, they decide not to. And this won't be on screen. I apologize. And they got tails, which means they do not proceed. All of Talon decides not to investigate the source of the noise. Whatever is making it will not be friendly to them, and they are only one cat deal because I really like all of Talon. Bluff Bat is also going to do some hunting. Your patrol catches scent of a mouse nearby. Bluff Bat locates the mouse and begins to stalk. The mouse nibbles on a seed unaware of the hunting cat. Bluff Bat waggles their haunches and leaps pinning the mouse beneath a paw as they make the killing bite. A small amount of prey is brought to camp. Good deal. We have Meadowstorm, who is also going to go hunting. Meadowstorm wakes from a dream of rich yolk, tongue sticking out, ready to lap from the from an eggshell. However, when they poke their head out of their den to go nest raiding, there's rain pouring down outside, but they can still taste egg on their tongue. Okay, so I've had this one go two different ways. One, it goes good, and one, we had a cat die, so I'm going to flip a coin on this one to see if we proceed or not as well. And it is tails again, so they do not proceed. Nope, nope, going out in this weather is a bad idea. And we'll say that Meadowstorm remembers what happens, what happened to, who was it that died? I don't even remember now. Oh, I think it was Ivory Goose. Yeah. It was Ivory Goose who went and it did not go well for them. We have Ebony Swan who is also going to go hunting. Ebony Swan catches the scent of a fox, but is it red or gray? Tracking it, they find a stocky gray fox feeding on a deer fawn carcass. A gray fox is unlikely to have killed a fawn this size. Okay, we are going to flip a coin on this again. I'm hoping for tails, but let's see what happens. Oh, we got heads, darn it. So she's going to proceed, even though I feel like it's a terrible idea. Not all cats will make the right choices. Emily Swan makes a stupid mistake, too intent on winning the fight to respect their enemy's teeth, and it's tripping over their own feet that saves them. They give up and settle down to wait a safe distance away until the fox leaves of its own accord. A very small amount of prey is brought to camp. Whew! I really thought that was going really badly and she was going to die, but thankfully she made it. And we got some food. Okay, we have Tenderfoot, who is going to go on a border patrol looking for his mate, or her mate. Okay. While on patrol, Tenderfoot notices some suspicious paw prints in the mud beneath the canopy. Could it be her mate? Let's go ahead and proceed. Boldly, Tenderfoot follows the paw prints in the hopes that it is her mate to a trespassing rogue and confronts them. 
fur puffed up and scowling, they demand the rogue leaves Mystery Clan territory. Intimidated by their confidence, the rogue gives in and leaves without a fight. So, not successful in finding her mate, but was successful in scaring off a rogue out of Mystery Clan territory, so that was good. Jade Song is going to go hunting. Your patrol comes across a bird that's occupied, scratching at the ground for insects. Your patrol narrowly misses the bird. A very small amount of prey is brought to camp. We have Sprout Pelt going hunting. Sprout Pelt's glad to go out on a solo hunting patrol. There's an ambush spot they've been itching to try out on their own. Sprout Pelt succeeds beyond their wildest hopes, coming home with prey so large they have to drag rather than carry it. A huge amount of prey is brought to camp. Okay, we have Ferret Valley going on a solo hunting patrol. As Ferret Valley sets off to see what they can find for the fresh kill pile, the new leaf sun feels weak, but the grass is sprouting and the trees of the forest are coated in mangy pelts of not quite unfurled leaf buds. Let's see what they can rustle up. When they round a bend in the path, Ferret Valley hears a bird call, jerking their head up. They lose their footing and skid down a slope. More mud than grass. They're not that badly hurt, but Ferret Valley is tender enough. After that fall to give up and go home, Ferret Valley got sore. All right, we have Spicy Stone going hunting. The patrol notices a commotion and finds two squirrels chasing each other across the forest floor. The squirrels are far too excited and quick. They slip right out from between the patrol's claws. A very small amount of prey is brought to camp. <clears throat> I apologize, guys. I'm losing my voice. Strathflower heads out into the forest alone, wanting to sink their teeth into some prey and have some time to themselves. Strawflower heads off to one of their favorite spots in the forest. A grove of spread out trees with thick underbrush providing excellent ambush chances. And what do you know? They are bush. Or they were as far as that squirrel thought. A medium amount of prey is brought to camp. Lavender Paw is going herb gathering by herself. With the new leaf comes the opportunity to scout out Mr. Clan's territory and find where Mullion might be growing this year. Lavender Paw fails to find any Mullion, and as the plant sometimes dies completely in leaf bare, can't use any of the spots they know from last year. We have Gander Paw also going on a herb patrol. Worried about their stores of burdock and anticipating the plant's new leaf growth, Ganderpaw heads out to replenish the clan's stocks. The strengthening new leaf sun has tempted fat burdock leaves to start to sprout, and it's not finding them that's hard. It's trying to carry all the roots back to camp all at once that proves difficult. Burdock was gathered. We have Cyclone Paw. Cyclone Pa tests the air, trying to decide it, if it's warm enough to gather catmint yet. They'd really like to replenish the herb stalks after leaf bear. It's alright to fail, Cyclone Pa reminds themselves. At least they know where there isn't catmint, and that will make the next patrols to find it easier. We have a Buck Bumble. While searching for some specific herbs, Buck Bumble is started by weird sounds and whispers on the wind. The sounds die away and then start up again in strange, unpredictable intervals. Investigating, Buck Bumble suddenly finds themselves nose to nose with a panting, bleeding queen, one desperately trying to keep their newborn litter quiet. Buck Bumble brings the queen back to camp. Where the clan can assist. So we have new clan mates. We have Domino, Whispering Kit, Pike Kit, 
and our clan's reputation towards outsiders has improved. Cool. Um, I wonder how old Domino is. Maybe, maybe that's Tenderfoot's mate. Who knows? We'll check in a minute. Pete Bog. With New Leaf comes the opportunity to scout out Mr. Clan territory and find where Marigold might be growing this year. The low growing Marigold creeps across the ground, recognizable by its strange leaves that look like they're pretending to be small fern. Fronds from a distance. Marigold was gathered. Juniper Bell gets to go herb gathering. Juniper Bell heads out into the territory to stock up on cobwebs, something the clan never seems to have enough of. Overtired from caring for their patients all day and night, the only cobwebs Juniper Bell manages to collect are the ones they accidentally walked into. Snake Charm. With the new leaf bringing ragwort back on the medicinal menu, Snake Charm heads out to find where the silly plants have decided to sprout this year. In new leaf with most ragwort plants still flowerless, they're a little more bearable to harvest, the foul scent of their petals not yet muddying the air. We still need a lot of prey, so Dad's leaf is going to go hunting as well. Dazzle Leaf heads out into the forest alone, wanting to sink their teeth into some prey and have some time to themselves. Dazzle Leaf heads off to one of their favorite spots in the forest, a grove of spread out trees with thick underbrush providing excellent ambush chances. And what do you know? They are bush. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me. They are bush. I don't know. Or they were, as the squirrel thought, they snickered to themselves as they pad back to camp. A medium amount of prey is brought to camp. And I gave Star is going to also do some hunting. Oh, their meat pill jump is dead. So sad. They're gonna go hunting and try to help their clan out because they know that food, uh, food is not good enough. I gave Star heads out into the forest alone, wanting to sink their teeth into some prey and have some time to themselves. You can't catch what isn't there, and the prey today is very not there. Darn it. Okay, we are going to... Do some mediating. And... Oh, you know what? Hold on. I want to check... Let's see your new cats. There, there. There's Domino. This is our sick queen. Okay, and she is 38 moons. So that makes sense for Tenderfoot. So I think we're going to say that they are mates. And we can change her name to Ginger Snap. Even though I like the name Domino, maybe we can give that to somebody else. Ginger Snap. So, no wonder Tenderfoot was in, like, searching for her mate because she was very worried about her. Maybe they got into, like, a, a situation and got split up. Okay, and then we want to go to our new kits. Pretty sure it's just these guys. Um, no. There's just two. Okay. So Whispering Kit is snuggled safe in the nursery, you could tell. We are going to have Tenderfoot adopt them. Okay, and whisp then pike kit, we're going to do the same thing. Okay, 
right, and then we are going to set Ginger Snap up with Tenderfoot. There we go. Cool. That worked out well. And we found Ginger Snap way faster than I expected to. Very cool. Now we can do our mediating. So, look what a whimsy toe. And we are going to do Tenderfoot and Ginger Snap. Oh, look. They already have romantic light. Probably because I put them as mates, but you know. Let's go ahead and mediate them. Romantic interest increased, respect increased, platonic like increased, and jealousy decreased. Okay. Lightning shower can do Sue Ebony Swan and Jade Song. Respect increased, platonic like increased, comfort increased, and dislike decreased. Mama Strike, let's do. Let's just do some random ones. We'll do Obsidian Paw and Husky Paw. Because they don't have like anything. Trust increase, comfort increase, platonic like increase, respect increase, and dislike decreased. And gold Heart, let's do Magma Paw and. Ibis Foot. See, they're both 12 moons. I'm going to allow Romantic on that. Well, <laughs> as long as they're not related, I can never remember who's related and who's not, so I probably should have checked that first, but it's okay. Platonic so like increase, trust increase, comfort increased, respect increased, dislike decreased, and jealousy decreased. Okay, Ibis Bud can do. Um, let's do. Let's do Meadow Storm and Bluff Bat. And we won't allow um, Romantic on this one. Comfort increased, respect increased, Platonic like increased, and trust increased, dislike decreased. And Magma Paw can do. Let's do Olive Talon and. Um, Cinder Dove. Trust increased, comfort increased, respect increased, jealousy decreased, and dislike decreased. Okay, and then. We'll do. Um, where is Glitter Kit? There's Glitter Kit. And then we'll do um, Spicy Stone. Because there's a bit of dislike there, so I'll mediate them. Trust increased, respect increased, platonic like increased, comfort increased, dislike decreased, jealousy decreased. Okay, and then we'll do a Gave Star with um, Flood Run. Can't get rid of that dislike. Platonic like increased, trust increased, jealousy decreased, and dislike decreased. Good deal. Alright, and that is all the mediating we can do for the day. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll feed everybody, but I'll do that off camera just because it takes a while and it's not that interesting. So, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging with me. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Remember, you can leave a comment down below if you'd like. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, bye bye